Do you hear parents talk about having an easy bedtime routine with their kids and you just kind of like internally roll your eyes thinking, how are the words easy and bedtime in the same sentence together? If your kid's bedtime routine has become like a complicated matrix of things filled with you reading like a library's worth of books and fielding all kinds of like demands and requests from your kid that you just never seem to execute just the way they want, then listen up because today I've got the three keys to the best bedtime routine for your three, four, or five-year-old. So what's the best bedtime routine for your child? I've got three pieces of advice for you today. First, the best bedtime routine is one that your toddler really enjoys. So oftentimes we parents set up a bedtime routine when our kid is much younger before they really have opinions. And then we just try to keep that routine going. But what happens is once our kid is like two and a half, three years old, they may wanna have some input. I mean, they're filled with opinions. Of course, instead of asking nicely to change up the bedtime routine, they're just gonna tantrum and misbehave and freak out and just generally never seem satisfied with anything that's happening at bedtime. And really that's just typical toddler preschooler communication tactics. So what is a bedtime routine that they would actually enjoy and go along with? Well, think about what your kid really likes. And so this may be different for every kid, right? Some kids really love having some dedicated talk time at the end of the day. Some just love snuggles. Some love, you know, sitting in the rocking chair and having books read to them. Some kids love singing lullabies. Some kids love playing with dinosaurs. Some kids really want to change their baby doll's diaper before bed. So it really can depend on the child. That's why there's no exact roadmap for what should be included in the routine. Universally, one thing that all kids this age love is to have some control. I mean, think about your kid's life. They're being told what to do all day long. All day long, they're being told what to wear, where to go, what to eat, when they can eat. And sometimes at the end of a long day, your kid's just out of patience and this power struggle kind of reaches ahead and that's where you get this never ending bedtime drama. So involve your child in the process of setting up a bedtime routine that they're actually going to enjoy. Talk to them about it. When you talk to them about it and involve them in the process and fill the bedtime routine with things that they actually think are fun, they're much less likely to push back on you. And if your kiddo really likes to be in control, go ahead and write out the bedtime routine, draw it out on a little chart and put them like in charge of it and let them boss you around for a change. The second most important thing is for the bedtime routine to have a well-defined ending. I call this the grand finale. So the grand finale is the point after which the lights go off, the parent leaves the room, and bedtime is officially over. This should be the final step that your child knows about and is aware of that the grand finale really means that the day is done. Lots of families end a bedtime routine by singing a lullaby, but it's really up to whatever your family wants. It could be tucking your kid in super tight, you know, just like they like it. It could be having a tickle fest. It could be having the world's greatest squeeze hug. It's really up to your family. What it is matters less than it being done consistently. Consistency is really the most important piece so that your child starts to learn that no matter who handles bedtime, once the grand finale comes, it really means that the day is done. I explain this in more detail in my Toddler Sleep Masterclass. If you wanna reserve a free spot, you can do that at toddlersleepmasterclass.com. Finally, timing bedtime correctly can make the bedtime routine go more smoothly for everybody because your child's gonna be more calm and more tired. If you try to start bedtime too late, like a lot of families do, then your child is like too tired. They're overtired and they get a second wind and then they get all this like fussy energy to just fight the bedtime routine every step of the way. But when you time bedtime correctly, about 30 minutes before you want your child to actually be asleep, the bedtime routine goes much more smoothly. So look for your child's signs of tiredness. Do they get really quiet? Do they kind of zone out? Do they start twirling their hair? Does their body get kind of slouchy? These are all signs of tiredness and that it's time to start that bedtime routine. 
If your child is yawning and really just rubbing their eyes, those are signs that they're too tired. Those are, those are really advanced sleepy signs. It actually means that you've missed their ideal bedtime. So what I want you to do is look at the clock and then start bedtime earlier tomorrow night. Bad timing is one of the main reasons why bedtime battles happen in the first place. So if you've got a kiddo who's under six years old, make sure their bedtime is before 745. This is going to allow them to fall asleep peacefully and get those 10 to 12 hours of sleep that they need every night. So change up your bedtime routine tonight using these tips. And if your evening feels kind of crunched trying to shove everything in before that bedtime routine starts, check out this video.